James one thirteen through fifteen Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Have you ever gone to a restaurant and seen the brownies there? Don't they look delicious? I mean, they're fresh and warm from the oven, and they look so soft and moist and all covered with rich, smooth chocolate frosting. Mmm. Who could resist such good-looking brownies? Who would want to? If you're like me, you go ahead and take one. You take a big bite, expecting a little taste of heaven, but what you get is a mouthful of dry, bland brownie that makes you want to gag, along with the most bitter, sticky frosting you can imagine. Now all you want is to take a drink and get that hideous taste out of your mouth. But the frosting sticks to the mouth and coats it so badly that it seems that you need a whole ocean of something really sweet before that taste will ever come out of the mouth. Well, that's been my experience anyway. If I want something really good, I'm better off making it myself. So what does all this have to do with the passage I just read? It's simple. That's the way sin is. It looks so incredibly good, but once you get a bite, it turns out to be so hideously bad. What's worse, no amount of good actions can get rid of it or its consequences. Job 20:12-15 says, Though wickedness be sweet in his mouth, though he hide it under his tongue, Though he spare it, and forsake it not, but keep it still within his mouth, yet his meat in his bowels is turned. It is the gall of asps within him. He hath swallowed down riches, and he shall vomit them up again. God shall cast them out of his belly. No matter how good it looks, or even tastes, the end result of sin is always bitterness leading to death. Always. What's worse is that we have all sinned. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So what can be done about it? I mean, if everyone has sinned and sin brings death, does that mean there is no way to be saved? God has provided a way through His Son, Jesus. He came into the world, lived a sinless life, took the death penalty you and I deserve, and rose from the dead, conquering both sin and death for every one who would turn to Him and live for Him. Believe me, there is nothing like the sweetness of the presence of God in your life. Psalm 34, 8 says, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Are you ready to do that? If so, you can start with this simple little prayer. Dear Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins, and that you rose again the third day. Please forgive me for my sins, and come into my heart, and be Lord of my life. Help me overcome sin in my life and live for you, so I will have joy when I see your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Get a Bible and start reading it to learn more of his will, so you can live out his holiness in your life. If you are interested in understanding the story of Jesus' life better, you might like Emmanuel by April Marie. You can check it out at any of these websites also included in the video description. Thank you for watching. May you taste the goodness of God in your life.